Hello students, welcome to your economics class. Welcome grade 9. I am Mrs. Jenny Shah and I'm going to be teaching you all economics this year. Economics, I know this is a completely new subject for you. And so we'll first brush up a little bit about economics before we really venture into the chapters. So what is economics? We discussed the definitions last year. So I will not do that today. But let's look into the word. Economics is the word derived from two Greek words. Of course, which is a house and nemin, which means to manage. So economic really means managing a household using the limited fund funds available in the most satisfactory manner. Now, like you can figure out that this term is so old, um, you know, we've derived it from the Greek words. So I don't think it will be new to you to understand that it was technically for the women because they would be managing the household and how well can they manage the household with limited i repeat limited funds that means it's not like and even today your mother must be doing more maybe taking more economic actions in the house than anybody else of course it must not be understood or maybe it is not widely accepted or people are not really aware but this is the truth economics was derived from the term or of course a nemin which means to manage a house technically literal meaning is managing a household using limited funds in the most satisfactory manner that means making sure that the entire family is satisfied now economic problems everybody has economic problems there are economic problems are worldwide and the most major factors responsible for this the two basic factors are the existence of unlimited human wants and the scarcity of available resources that means we have unlimited wants and we have less resources now Let's understand unlimited wants as an example. Let's say a small child of your age wants a mobile phone, for example. So they tell the parents, the parents will go and purchase a mobile phone. Now, when they are given the mobile phone, the next thing that they may say is, I don't want this, I want an Apple, or I want an iPhone, or you know, a Samsung, or I have, I want a OnePlus, or XYZ, XYZ, XYZ. Or, after a few days, they may say, oh, the, I, the phone is very tiny. My screen is, my eyes are really getting scratchy with it. I want an iPad. Okay. Let's say, uh, or they may say something like, my phone doesn't have internet. I need internet. Uh, let's say we give them internet. We give them an iPad also. Then they will say something like, um, I don't have good quality headphones. I need headphones. I need this. I need that. Even if you just write down your needs from for a single day in a book, you will see you actually have unlimited needs. Our needs don't end. If you give, if if we need food and we are given food, then we say, okay, we need something better. Okay, if I'm if I'm being given noodles, okay, I want gravy. I want, I want Manchurian. I want to add more spice to it. Give me more Szechuan sauce. Maybe give, give me this. Give me that. The needs just keep increasing. We all, this is a human trait, so you don't need to feel guilty about it, but it can be controlled and exercised. We can exercise control over it, but that's not the topic for today. The topic is that human wants are unlimited. Me, you, your parents, my, my parents, my children, your children. Okay, you don't have children. I went wrong there. Your friends, chalo, your friends your cousins, your classmates, your everyone living around you, your grandparents, everybody has wants. 
but do we really have the resources to fulfill all these wants if each and every person wants an iphone in this world do we really have the resources to give it to them today we don't even have resources to feed everyone not let's not talk about iphone let's talk about basics like food today we have less resources even to provide food for everyone in such a scenario how do we manage what decisions do we take that is the economic decision then this is the economic problem the base of the economic problem is unlimited wants and scarcity of resources who is an economist who is an economist we are studying any we are studying economics and in the future if you uh, like this subject if this subject intrigues you if you feel a pull towards it if you understand it very naturally you understand it very easily then you have a caliber for it you have an aptitude for it in that case you may want to pursue it further so if you want to become an economist or if you are aware of an economist who is he what does he do an economist is an expert who studies the relationship between a society's resources and its production or output that means he he is an expert who will be able to identify society resources as we all know the resources are limited so then he will he will study the relationship between these resources and the production of that resources and the output we get so they study societies ranging from small societies to local communities to entire nation and they even study the global economy the world economy as a whole so these people they study the relationship between resources and its production so now this is your activity for today i want you to google i want you to research i want you all to find out about two economists now these economists could be alive could be dead these economists could be a boy of a, a man it could be a woman these economists could be a uh, really old okay and they could even be very young but out of these two i want one to be international and one to be national means i want you all to find out about one indian economist and one international economist like i said they do not need to be living they do not need to be alive it could be the past i want you to find out about of course when you're searching about them you will find out about their name you will also find out so once you get the name i want you to find out about their theory which economic theory did they come up with most of the economists have a theory so i want you to find out about them about their theory and try and understand even one paragraph of that theory like just the summary it's absolutely fine so in your notebooks you're going to stick two pictures one of an international economist one of a national economist and i want you to write down their name the name of their theory and your understanding of that theory in three lines i repeat your understanding of that theory in maximum three lines you will not go about three lines it could be one or two lines also but i want your understanding of that economic theory whether i don't want you to copy it from the internet whatever you are able to understand that according to me his theory focused on understanding consumer relations or understanding how consumers fulfill their needs whatever is your understanding there's no right or wrong here it is just about reflection of your work what work you have done and how how does it reflect you when you're thinking okay so i'm just going to say this activity again you're going to research about two economists one international one national you're going to search about their name and their economic theory write their names in your notebooks stick their picture write the name of their theory and explain the theory in maximum three lines minimum one line in your own words okay now economics is broadly divided into two branches macroeconomics and microeconomics 
Microeconomics, just like the name suggests, is a study of small economic units. So microeconomics is concerned with the consumer's decision making and utility maximization. So how are you taking your decision? Let's say you go to a store to buy, um, let's assume Maggi noodles and it's run out. So there are no resources and you have a want or a need to eat it. So what decision are you taking? Do you decide to not take it or walk back home? Do you decide to go to another shop or do you decide to substitute it or whatever other decision you take? So microeconomist will study the consumer decision making and utility maximization. How does a firm produce and how are they achieving maximum profit? Individual market equilibrium, effects of the government regulations on individual markets and externalities and other market side effects. This is macroeconomics. I'm sorry, uh, there seems to be a title error there. I will, I will correct it, but it will only happen after the class. So please uh, bear with me. This is a macroeconomic slide. Macroeconomic is the bigger picture of economics and it, for, it mainly focuses on aggregate production and consumption in an economy as a whole. Okay, so macroeconomics, uh, if, you, if you find the macroeconomist, he will study topics like the effects of general tax, um, you know, general taxes such as income tax or sales tax, uh, how does this affect the output of something? How does this affect the prices of some goods? He will uh, study causes of the economic upswing and downstream turns. He will uh, study topics like the effect of monetary policy on the economic health. How does the interest rate determine the uh, economy of a country? Why does some economies grow faster than the other economies? So all this is studied by macroeconomics. Now, now that I have taught you microeconomics and macroeconomics, I've introduced you to this topic. When you are doing your research on your economist, I want you to even mention in your notebooks whether he was a macroeconomist, microeconomist, or both. Okay? So, the major difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics is that in microeconomics, the the economist is studying individual income and in macroeconomics, the economist will study national income. So individual income versus the nation's income. In microeconomics, the person will analyze the demand and supply of labor. Whereas in macroeconomics, he will analyze total employment in the economy. Microeconomics will deal with households and firm decisions. Whereas macroeconomics will deal with aggregate decisions. Microeconomics studies individual prices and macroeconomic studies overall price level. Microeconomic will analyze the demand and supply of goods. Whereas macroeconomics will only analyze the aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So one is going to look at things in a microscopic manner Whereas the other is going to look at things in a macro as a bigger picture. Step behind it and see the picture as a whole. Okay. I would like to end this class with the quote that I relate to very well. Economics is the art to meet unlimited needs with scarce resources. With this children, I end this class and I hope this journey, the beginning of economics, as a subject was comfortable and enriching for you. With these children, stay home, stay safe, take care, keep learning. Thanks.